Oh, I'm very excited. This technique I'm going to show you today is really fun. It's a heat patina using flux and rubber stamps. I've bought some handy flux, a gel flux from Rio Grande, and I have a paintbrush and some scrap metal today to show you the technique along with some rubber stamps. You can do this on copper and brass and I'm sure silver too, which I haven't tried yet. I'm going to take my paintbrush and get some gel flux on it and paint on the surface of my rubber stamp. Now after I paint it on, I'm going to use my brush and try to get the flux out of the deeper crevices of my stamp so I get a really nice stamped image on my metal and not super goopy and messy. I'm going to put my stamp down and I like to take my metal and push it down on top of the stamp. And then you'll see here I have my stamped design on my metal which happens to be a flower. That looks good. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to paint the flux onto my stamp and stamp it onto my metal. So now I've got a second piece that will be ready to be heated. Let's remember that flux protects the metal from the heat. So when we solder, we flux our metal because solder only wants to flow when the metal is clean. So if we use flux now in a pattern, that flux is going to protect the metal where the pattern is and then the rest of the metal is going to get colored, you know, oxidized. The heat is going to change the color of the metal. So I've got four pieces of metal now with my design stamped into it with flux. I'm going to put my first piece on to a charcoal block and apply some heat. I'm using a 180-1 torch tip in my acetylene tank. I'm not going to heat this one too much, just a little bit back and forth and then with my tweezers I'm going to quench it in the water. Let's take a look. Slight color change with a beautiful stamp pattern in it. I'll try it on my second piece. This time I'm going to apply a little more heat, so I'm going to torch it just a little bit longer. You can see the stamped pattern. The flux is protecting the metal underneath that pattern. There we go. Now I'm going to quench it in the water again. Let's take a look this time. A little more color change and you can still see the pattern. This third time I'm going to apply more heat still. So I'm going to make sure that my torch is moving back and forth on the metal, constantly moving, but I'm going to do this a little bit longer. I'm really close to hot cherry red. Now I'm going to quench it. Let's take a look this time. Ooh, I'm getting some nice reds. Let's try a fourth time. This time I want to apply the heat to the metal and I want to get it cherry red. I'm just going to char it. Let's see what happens here. So more and more heat. I can see that flux is bubbling off. I'm losing my flux. Flux doesn't last forever. Now let's take a look. Much darker. Reds, purples, and I've kind of lost that pattern. Let's take a look here. Here are my four samples today. The one on the left is low heat. You can still see the pattern stamped clearly onto the metal. And the part of the metal that didn't have the flux has a slight color change. The one all the way on the right has a high heat, right? I used a lot of heat. I torched it for much longer. Two in the middle, a little bit of medium heat. I really like the differences. What's your favorite? Low heat? A little more heat? Starting to see little reds in there. More heat still. I really like that one. And then finally high heat. This technique is pretty experimental. If you get something you like once, sometimes it's hard to get the exact same result another time. You really have to experiment with your stamps, your patterns, and the amount of heat you use. Play around with copper and brass too. This is a great technique to get a pattern and color on your metal.